Uh, Victoria Jones from the Talk Radio News Service is with us, our Washington Bureau. Uh, Victoria, welcome back to News Talk Online on the Pal Talk News Network. Uh, obviously, the, the big story still in Washington actually is emanating from Arizona, Tucson. Senator Leahy today uh, said that he believes that the political rhetoric contributed to the tragedy that occurred on Saturday. And as much as I have been on the record that we need to tone down the discourse, there is no uh, proof, is there? Or does he know something that the rest of us don't know? Well, unless he's, unless he's had access to some writings of Lochner, um or, or something else of Lochner, he has absolutely no way of knowing that, and Lochner is not speaking. The only person in politics, it seems to me, uh, apart from Eric Holder, the Attorney General, possibly Janet Napolitano, who would know this, is the President of the United States, who is being frequently briefed. Um, maybe John Boehner, somebody like that, who's probably also being briefed. I would be very surprised. I mean, maybe he's on the Judiciary Committee. Maybe he knows. But I would be very, very surprised if these people actually know this. They are making it up out of their bottoms. Exactly, and I, and I have a, a real problem with that. And as much as I agree that it's something we ought to do, what we say about it ought to be based on facts and not uh, just on speculation, or at least if it's speculative, we should indicate that we're speculating and not uh, present it as fact. Now, you mentioned the President of the United States and he being briefed. He is going, I believe, tomorrow to Tucson to participate in the memorial there. That's right. Um, he is going to Tucson tomorrow. He was invited by the University of Arizona. They are having a memorial, and uh, he will speak at that memorial. And that's going to be an interesting challenge because these things are um, landmines, um, uh, metaphorical landmines. Be very careful with your with your rhetoric these days. Met met metaphorical landmines for presidents. Um, he probably should speak briefly and should use unifying, soaring language. There was an interesting statement this morning by White House spokesman Nick Shapiro um, about why he's going. And he said the president thought it was important to visit the Tucson community since this tragedy touched everyone there as well as throughout the entire country in some way. The president believes that right now the main thing we should be doing is offering our thoughts and prayers to those who've been impacted and making sure that we're joining together and pulling together as a country. And that really reflects the kind of remarks that he made yesterday when he was with Nicolas Sarkozy, the President of France in the Oval Office, when he talked about the country pulling together. He used those words. He talked about the courage of the people on the scene at the shootings. And he also talked about, as a president and as a father, um, how he was reaching out uh, to the family members. So, so far, that has been the tenor of his language. It's been very measured. He has stayed out of the fray, unlike uh, former President Bill Clinton, by the way. Oh, I hadn't heard yeah, what Clinton no. said, but I will say that the uh, governor of Arizona uh, finally uh, did something that I thought was very statesmanlike yesterday when she stood before a joint session of the state legislature to give the state of the uh, state address, and all she did was reflect upon what happened and talked about the good in the community, uh, the, the people who, who were heroic on, under these horrific uh, circumstances and offered prayer for the entire community and, of course, for the people uh, most uh, impacted by this. And I think that that's the job of a governor, of a mayor, and of a president of the United States in times such as these. People are looking for some kind of apolitical direction and sometimes we turn to our politicians for that. Yeah, this was exactly the thing that she needed to do. Um, for her, and she said this herself, for her to speak about policy at that particular time in that state, a state of the state address would have been entirely the wrong thing, the wrong time. She'll have another opportunity um, because that state of the state address is, is going to be a controversial address because their fiscal situation is very dire. As you know, there have been budget cuts that uh, some say have resulted in the deaths of people who were waiting for transplants. Um, and, and in fact, by the way, uh, Representative Giffords have been critical of Jen Brewer because of that. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it, it is a very fraught time in Arizona politics, but she struck exactly the right note. 
I think she did. Uh, let's talk very briefly about Peter King, the Republican of New York, uh, who's very strong, very conservative, except in the area of gun control, in which he maybe he's reflective of uh, his constituents. Uh, he stood shoulder to shoulder with Mayor Bloomberg today and called for tougher gun control laws, but he is introducing legislation that would make it a crime to carry a gun in proximity of any federal official, including a member of Congress. I don't quite fully understand this particular legislation. Obviously, if somebody is intent on killing a congresswoman, uh, he's not going to say, ooh, I can't get close to her with a gun because I might get arrested because I have a gun. I don't think that person is going to really care. Is this some kind of a knee-jerk reaction? And is it something that he's doing maybe because he feels himself as a congressman in uh, potentially threatened? Well, I, I can't uh, speak to his state of mind. It is interesting, and I must say I, I have uh, had quite negative reactions from the talk show hosts I've spoken with this afternoon, um, some even saying, what, do congressmen uh, think that they're more important than the rest of us, that they should get special protections and we don't? Well, of course they do. Of course they do. They get they get health care that they vote against or they're trying to revoke that we don't get. So why should this be any different? Yeah, it, it is interesting. I mean, basically, you know, it would be uh, something similar to, uh, to, to the, the, there is already a law in place that makes it illegal to have a gun within a thousand um, uh, yards, I think it is, of a school. So it would be similar to that. Yeah, well, it's not particularly enforceable. I'm walking down the street and I'm legally carrying a gun, which I don't. I don't have a gun. And uh, I, I bump into Charlie Rangel, which I did the other day. You know, So now I'm in vi violative of a law that I did not intend to, to, to violate. It's a stupid idea. Hey, uh, Victoria Jones, thanks for joining us. Victoria Jones, our great correspondent from our Washington Bureau, Talk Radio News Service in Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us and doing such a great job of putting all this in perspective for us on News Talk Online on the Pal Talk News Network. Thank you so much.